Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video I would like to talk about next generation Xbox and why it makes sense to release this new console in 2026. Now there's quite a lot of reasons why it makes sense actually, so let me tackle the length of generations uh, first. Now there's quite a lot of people saying that six years for a generation is not long enough, is not enough. Uh, and I don't agree, I disagree with this, uh, because obviously if Xbox was to release their new console in 2026, that would make this uh, current generation uh, six years long. But if you go back in time just a little bit, like to early 90s, for example, or early 2000s, um, four or five years for a generation was... Uh, I guess a standard uh, for the most part, right? I mean, you know, Xbox, first Xbox generation was four years old, uh, year long. Uh, Xbox 360 was actually longer, but that was mainly due to the uh, um, economical crisis and uh, the introduction of Kinect and uh, Move controllers on PlayStation 3, I guess. Uh, but previous generations, PlayStation 1 and I think uh, 2 as well, and some other generations in the past, like Nintendo, they would last four or five years for the most part, right? So six years is more than enough, right? I understand that last generation was a little bit different. Xbox 360, PS3 generation was a bit different uh, due to the uh, Kinect and Move controllers. Last generation, uh, we had uh, mid-gen upgrades. That's why it was different. Uh, but I, in overall, I think six years is more than enough, right? Um, Another thing about, I guess, not really generations and length of it, but uh, the cool thing about Xbox releasing in 2026, um, the cool thing about it is that it would uh, release not at the same time as PlayStation or any other console, right? So that would give us, um, well, more things to be excited about, right? Like I remember back in the days, we would get a lot of different consoles launching at different times and we would have, uh, you know, it wouldn't be a situation like with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One or uh, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles where both would just release it pretty much at the same time and you know it's kind of like yeah we let's focus on one or the other right like um you know it's, it's kind of boring let's face it right like having these consoles at the different times like nintendo switch uh actually launched at its own kind of time i guess right not along with other consoles and that kind of makes things interesting and you, you get some new hardware new stuff uh, every couple of years right so that kind of makes things interesting in my opinion so that's another another reason why release, releasing xbox uh, next let's call it uh, xbox next for now it uh, makes sense in 2026 now another thing is obviously the um uh well new technologies any technology breakthrough breakthrough breakthroughs and that kind of stuff now i'm not kind of sure uh whether we're going to reach that point in 2026 but that may be and i think digital foundry kind of alluded to this in one of their videos a while ago that 2026 may be the time when we will have a technology mature enough and powerful enough to actually make a difference right so we're not just talking about some you know mid-gen upgrades but like a proper boost in terms of performance capabilities or maybe some new uh, technologies overall right and also uh, i like the fact that uh, digital foundry did say that by 2026 7 uh, most there will be more than enough graphics cards on pc that you know, developers developing only for these consoles will be able to um, focus uh, on like supporting ray tracing or some other f features, right? Um, so that kind of makes sense as well. So it will, yeah, we do have games with ray tracing right now, but they still have to uh, figure out a way of like, um, well, compromising a little bit because not the, the you know performance modes without ray tracing that kind of stuff and on PC they still have to deliver uh, ports uh, for 
GPUs that don't have ray tracing. So like, you know, like in next couple of years, that's probably going to change, right? They will be able to go with graphics cards uh, that uh, or games that do support ray tracing only, right? And uh, so that's going to be well, kind of easy on developers too, because they won't have to, they will using ray tracing and not having to worry about a, any other techniques for shadows or reflections or lighting, that's kind of less work for developers, right? Um, so that's kind of cool too. Um, so that makes sense. Um, also what makes sense is also by 2025, 2026, Xbox will have in my opinion, very strong position when it comes to uh, their games and exclusives, right? So, so I think that by the end of this generation, there will be a ton of great games on Xbox Game Pass and whatever, right? So that will show, um, and uh, you know, a, a, a lot of kind of developers that kind of that Microsoft bought couple of years ago, they will you know, hopefully re release their games and some games. And I'm sure that like Elder Scrolls uh, 6, for example, may be a 2026 game. So that would actually make it a, um, a next gen Xbox uh, launch title. Imagine that, right? You know, I'm sure they will have more titles and stuff, right? But I think like this generation, uh, uh, well, wasn't that great for Xbox so far? Uh, well, maybe like this year was much better than previous years, but like two, f well, I guess two first two and a half years of this generation for Xbox was pretty weak when it comes to, you know, exclusive content and, you know, like first party content, right? I'm not saying that the games were bad. I mean, some were like Redfall, unfortunately, but um there were there wasn't just enough of content and also there was uh this weird situation where a lot of games uh would still come out for playstation and that kind of stuff so even though they were they were first party xbox games per se but you know the contracts um um kind of forced Microsoft to still release all of these games for PlayStation, that kind of stuff. So yeah, PlayStation did benefit of it as well. While, uh, you know, right now we are just getting these games on Xbox uh, period, right? Um, I mean, except some ser games are service, of course, and obviously Call of Duty will stay on uh, PlayStation 2. Uh, so, you know, Microsoft will be an Xbox will be in much better position to offer a new console because there will be a ton of content uh or well, coming for that console right and because i'm sure that they will be in this in much better position with all these studios to offer way more games at the very beginning of the generation rather than just you know towards the end of it right or middle of it i mean yes the situation that xbox series x is right now and hopefully you know in the future is much better than than at the very beginning of this generation um, but, you know, at the end of the day, kind of this generation, uh, when it comes to console sales, uh, PlayStation won already and for Xbox is going to be like a clean uh, slate, clean, um, uh, you know, a, a new situation really, right? And um, it's it's it doesn't necessarily change much from the uh, active users perspective because people will still be playing on the older consoles too. Uh, there's still going to be this cross-gen period and that kind of stuff, that, that's for sure. But um, still, from marketing perspective, you will see, oh, a brand new Xbox console with a, a ton of brand new games, uh, power, uh, you know, improvements, ray tracing, 4K, 60 and whatever. It's going to be, you know, a, mar a new marketing thing again, right? So it kind of makes sense in my opinion, right? And also, um, you know, it kind of, you know, let me allude to the Xbox Series S video I, I made yesterday. Well, you know, Xbox and kind of, I guess, developers won't have to worry about Xbox Series S anymore. And I know that uh, it has been said in the past that, that Xbox doesn't really, Xbox Series S doesn't necessarily hold this generation back. And, you know, uh, it, it doesn't really. But for developers, it actually still extra work. So 
um, you know, at this point, the I mean, not this point, but you know, with next gen Xbox release in 2026, they could say that you know what, guys, uh, forget it. We're not doing that game uh, on Xbox Series S anymore because we just want to focus on next gen and whatever, right? So, um, you know, that's going to be something. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that probably developers would be very happy about, really, in my opinion. But, um, you know, and also uh, releasing a little bit earlier before PlayStation 5, it gives them, you know, a headroom for developers. Uh, you know, he's the more powerful console. Um, you know, now you can you have to focus and kind of learn new things only for one console, not like five of them or something when you've got all these consoles releasing at the same time. So um, and I'm sure they will have uh, both Xbox Series S and X and PlayStation 5 all figured out by that time. So, you know, they will just have to learn one particular specs again and new tricks, I guess. Um, so that makes sense as well. And also, the, the, I want to address one more thing, really, the last thing, really, here. Uh, people say, oh, you know, it doesn't make sense. You know, X PlayStation will have a, a way more powerful console two years later, and, you know, that's not good for Xbox. Well, not really, because, A, Xbox will have a power narrative, uh, you know, for two years again. And really, um, although PlayStation 5 releasing next year they will have a power power narrative for two years i guess too um so i guess that will balance out really but um you know with new console in 2026 and then playstation 6 releasing in 2028 for example i mean three years later microsoft can release an unupgraded console too right so it's maybe a playstation 4 Pro and play an Xbox One X situation where Xbox releases <clears throat> uh, an upgraded console two, three years, like not really two, but three, four years later, right? So, you know, and, and, and again, it will make things interesting again. It's not like, you know, I actually hate all these consoles releasing at the same time. It's just like, it kind of takes a little bit of steam of each console really, right? Where you, where when you have all these consoles, you know, launching at the separate times, that's a bit different. And I know that they did not launch, I mean, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, they did not launch at the same time, like literally, right? Um, they launched like a week apart, but like, that's not a lot, really, you know what I mean, right? Um, so, hey, th these are my thoughts on the next-gen Xbox, and I think that makes sense for uh for everyone right and and i wouldn't really worry about xbox Series s and x consoles either because for a long time probably two years uh, <clears throat> these consoles will be still supported um and um because uh well playstation 5 is still going to be there uh developers probably going to get probably will be used to you know these games uh, game consoles and uh, so they may as well just release a version for Xbox Series S and X. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's a kind of cool thing, really, right? Uh, uh, there's not a lot of information about it. Some people doubt that it's going to happen, but if you uh, if I hear things like that from Jeff Grubb or uh, Kepler L2, well, there's something to it, right? So guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Take care.